Philippians chapter 1, it says these words here. Watch this now. Okay? But God chose those whom the world considers foolish to shame those who think they are wise. And God chose the puny and powerless to shame the high and mighty. He chose the lowly, the laughable. All right, that laughable over there is actually referring to despised, disgusting, outcasts, perceived with contempt. So God chose them in the world uh, who are laughable in the world's eyes, nobodies, so that he would shame the somebodies. What a powerful verse. If you look at the life of Jesus Christ, hence why as a believer you've got the competitive advantage. Why? Because God's favor is upon your life in order to position you to be at the right place at the right time in order to fulfill his purposes. Like, and I'm pretty sure if every one of us around the table and those on Zoom too, if you would have to sit down and just kind of go and replay your life a bit, look at the doors that the Lord Jesus has opened up. You happen to just be at the right place at the right time, met the right person who knew the next person to connect you with the next person and here you are today. Ta-da! It wasn't because of your own intelligence, your own, no, it was because time and chance happened to you because at that moment, the favor of God was, was so upon your life to open up that door so that you could be at the right place at the right time to fulfill what He wanted to fulfill. Hence, understanding that it is the Lord who is your increase. It is the Lord who is your promotion. You'll be shocked at the results that's going to happen moving forward. If you look at the story of Joseph again, all right, Genesis 37 all the way through to, to, to I think about Genesis 50 or so, story of Joseph. Yes, oh, young Joe, 17 years of age, gets this dream. He's going to be a leader, ruler over his family. His brothers have a hissy fit of note and they sell him off as a slave. Little did they know the people that they're going to be selling him to, all right, are going to sell Joseph to Potiphar. He's going to end up in Potiphar's house and he's literally in the destiny of God. It looks like he's defeated. I mean, he gets called, called a rapist and gets chucked into prison. Looks like defeat, but the Lord was with him and therefore he was a success wherever he went, even in prison. Even in Potiphar's house. And in one hour, this guy's life was forever transformed and changed. Why? Because in one hour, he got promoted from prison to being put second in charge at Egypt. When Egypt was, was like the US of A today. One of the most powerful nations on the earth. And the only thing that, you know, he was basically, Joseph was basically the most powerful guy in the nation. The only thing that separated him from him and Pharaoh was the title of Pharaoh. That was the only thing. But when he got raised up to that position of influence, to that position of power, it was supposed to be for the glory of God. Because God had positioned him to be at the right place at the right time, even though according to worldly eyes and so forth. Ah, shame. Joe is money throne. But it was divine favor from the Lord that positioned him to be at the right place at the right time. That when Joseph would be in prison, the baker and the butler would be there. And God would connect them with these guys. Joseph would then serve these guys. And these guys, though they forgot him for two years, it was divine timing yet again that took place. And time and chance happened to Joe. It wasn't because Joe was intelligent. It wasn't because Joe was so skillful. It was because the Lord was with him. And because the Lord was with him, the skill and the gift that he had opened up a great door for him. But it wasn't in and of Joe himself. Again, it was an act of grace. Whenever you read through the scriptures, even in the Old Testament, I mean, you see, you see so many cases of, the, of God's grace upon individuals' lives. It's incredible to see and incredible to look at.